everyone. Welcome to TSP Weekly. This is your tech startup podcast for Thursday, May 28th, 2015. Today we are recording at the beautiful offices of Magnet Forensics. Beautiful. And uh, we are talking to the folks at Magnet Forensics today. We'll introduce them in just a second. Um, but yeah, we always love recording in a new location. Nice boardroom, lots of natural light. Uh, and we have beer. At least a couple of us have beer. <laughs> <laughs> I have a beer. Um, it's uh, the Push Broom Porter. It's um, produced by Block 3 Brewing, a wonderful local brewery, a local uh, microbrewery startup, actually. Yep. And um, some great guys doing some great things and making some good beer. So yeah, I made the mistake of bringing my own coffee today, so uh, I'm so enjoying okay. I nice can I coffee. can add a little bit of this to your coffee if you like <laughs> at some point. Yeah, the, but, the push uh, broom. Yeah, the coffee, yeah, a little bit of push broom. <laughs> yeah, these guys um, were very gentle with their uh, pat down of me this morning. Oh, yes, so that's good. I appreciate good. that. Uh, the cavity search was very quick. <laughs> Norman small fingers, appreciate that. <laughs> Efficiency. <laughs> oh dear. Well, let's get to the introductions before we get too far down that rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> my name is uh, Darren Conley. I'm a local tech entrepreneur here in Kitchener Waterloo. And joining me as always is my wonderful co host, fellow tech entrepreneur Stephen Campbell. How are you today, Stephen? I'm well, thanks. Yes, excellent. <laughs> Make and do with your coffee while the rest of us enjoy the block three. Um, let's. We have two guests, so let's introduce first um, Mr. Uh, Adam Belcher from uh, Magnet Forensics. What's what's your uh, what's your actual title there, He's the Adam? CEO. <laughs> yeah, CEO. Jack yep. of all trades. Okay. Excellent. Adam of all trades, maybe even. You, you could go. go so far. <laughs> Good. Um, and, uh, and joining us also is uh, Mr. Jad Saliba. Um, as far as I know, the, the, the guy who uh, was the genesis of, of Magnet Forensics, is that fair to say, Jad? Yeah, that's pretty fair. Yeah. Okay. Right. And what's, what's your official title at Magnet Forensics? Uh, so I'm the CTO now. So right. kind of looking after all the technology-related stuff while Adam takes care of all the, all the business stuff. Awesome. You got to have both. Yeah, good, good team. Thanks. Perfect. Um, so, guys, Magnet Forensics, I mean, anything with the word forensics in it, you know, evokes these images of, like, CSI or, uh, you know, people at these high-tech computer terminals deciphering the code that, you know, catches the criminals. Um, what What is Magnet Forensics all about? Um, tell us a little bit about your product and what you guys what you guys do with it. It's total CSI. Yeah, it's basically CSI. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, it's we'll take CS- you inside later to see the big screens that we have. And okay, uh, yeah. yeah, I've never so. seen anybody wear um, gloves to the podcast before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they've got the white gloves on. It's really odd. Right, Night trial. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they'll be dusting yeah. down the uh, mics for prints afterwards. Uh huh. <laughs> well, it depends can... how the interview goes. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Hopefully, we won't get to that point. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. So, um, what, what's what's the product all about? What do you guys do? Yeah. So, we, we have a, a product that searches computers and smartphones for internet related communications activity, uh, with a focus on recovering deleted data. So, even if you delete your chat logs, uninstall an app, or uh, clear your browser history, a lot of times we can still recover that. Right. So, for that reason, we're used by a lot of law enforcement agencies, government agencies that are. You know, seizing those kinds of devices in, in their investigations, um, mm-hmm. have the, the lawful authority to, to search them, and then uh, um, uh, they're using our software to, uh, to recover all that data, create reports, analyze it, create connections, do, wow. you know, conduct their investigation. What if I was to format my device? Could you still grab the oh, data? Oh, you got them. Yeah. <laughs> Shut down the device. <laughs> Why would yeah. you format it? <laughs> I, I, no, I'm, hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> Great. Yeah. You're starting with your mic. I, I with did actually break. flash my phone like a couple months ago and install like a, a new version of Android. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that – would you be able to, in theory, like look at what I had on my phone before I put it through that process? Yeah, I don't know if we can talk about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, oh, even, like trade secrets, huh? okay, even with stuff enough. like that, we can recover a lot of data. So okay. there's, there's a lot of things that people do that thinks that they, that they think erases data, but um, it, it actually uh, doesn't, get, doesn't get everything, or um, it's, it's just erasing pointers to the, to the files and, and the uh, data, but the data's still there. So. Maybe leaning up a big, against a big magnet or something? That might, do that might help, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> for a, a quality yeah. assurance testing yeah. job. Yeah. 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 Interviewing you guys is really just a sneaky way of me getting in here and finding out ways that I can get rid of my incriminating gotcha. evidence. I think, gotcha. right? so, so you guys yeah. just rolled out, you have something new at Magnet called the Magnet Acquire, and that's a smartphone acquisition tool. Tell us about that, because that sounds cool. Mm-hmm. Is that sort of a new product that you guys have? Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's brand new. Uh, we're pretty proud of it um, and the team that put it together. So 
in the past, what we uh, what our software did was once you had the data, either from the computer or, or the smartphone, that's when we'd come into play and we'd, we'd do the search, but we didn't actually acquire the data for you. So now this tool will allow us to, to get that data off the smartphone um, hmm. so that we can kind of do the whole the whole process ourselves and, and, and kind of own that and control all of that. So getting into more, uh, you know, just trying to help help our customers more and, and do more for them. Uh, mm-hmm. So they don't have to. So we don't have to say, "Hey, go use this other tool." And then once you have the data, uh, then we can do some really cool stuff for you. So I found it interesting when yeah. I was looking at the Internet Evidence Finder mm-hmm. or IEF. You yep. guys not only represent sort of the criminal aspect or hunting down the criminals, uh, but there's another side to it that you can prove that somebody's innocent by some of right. the data, and that your yeah. mantra is sort of nothing should stand in the way of the truth, right? So yes. you're not, it's all about the truth. It's all about data it's recovery. It's not guilt or innocence. It's truth, man. Here's the right. stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're, I mean, obviously, we, we support law enforcement and all they do and, and really care about um, a lot of the things that they, they uh, work towards, you know, uh, combating child exploitation, terrorism. But in the end, we're, we're just trying to uncover the answers and, and the truth and uh, that may exonerate someone. And, and our, our software has helped uh, do that in the past. Uh, we had uh, a case down in the States where um, uh, our customer told us that uh, this person was charged with homicide. And until they ran our software, um, that, that's kind of what they were leaning towards. After running our software, they, they found evidence, and we don't know the details because we never get those, but um, to, to prove that it was, a, it was a suicide. So wow. prevent, prevented someone from going through the court system, potentially saved going to jail. a lot of resources, I guess. A lot yeah. of resources saved, yeah. So, yeah, we're definitely about uh, uncovering the truth. That's kind of our... Our tagline. Your thing, yeah. yeah thing. That's really cool. N- now walk us through a, a situation like, s- let's say I am, uh, you know, working for a law enforcement agency somewhere. Um, I learn about you guys maybe from listening to this wonderful podcast, <laughs> and I think I want to make use of what those guys have. I think that would really enhance our ability to, you know, sort out the truth of, of what's going on in our investigations. So, w- so what do I do now? Drop you guys an email, give you guys a call. Do, is there a sales meeting? Do you install stuff on my computer? Like, how does it all work? take that one sure yeah. <laughs> uh so today it's a, a desktop piece of software so somebody say a law enforcement agency that could send us an email give us a call we do a lot of trade shows both in north america and around the world okay. um so there's a bunch of different ways they can contact us and we sell them the software and they would use it inside their for foren- their digital forensics lab so Today, we don't do any services, implementation. We do some training. Okay. I should say that. Um, but but, it's, but it's, you're handing someone like a CD or a DVD-ROM or something like that? And, yeah. And they a, pop it in and install, and off they go? It's a, it's yeah. a USB stick. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, sure. so it comes on a USB, and they have to have that plugged into the computer so the search will, will okay. work. So yeah. the software runs off of the stick itself. It used you to run off just eight track start. tape. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it's yeah. in the early days, right? Yeah. Well, sure. a beta. We had we had it on beta for a while. <laughs> oh, that didn't go over so well. Oh, yeah. That's what they mean when they do beta testing. Yes. Guess, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 That makes sense. <laughs> um, okay. Cool. So basically, I'm buying a USB stick and uh, and hopefully a little bit of support in case I can't figure out how to use the thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah the, that's the, all I need. Yeah. No, the interesting thing is because we're supporting all these different types of applications, whether it's on mobile or computers. Um, they change so frequently. So a lot of what we do and a lot of what Jad's team do in, in terms of R&D is how do you stay on top of this? Hmm. How do you stay on top of WhatsApp that changes their app every 30 days or Facebook or um, Kick or, or whatever? So a lot of our kind of R&D and focus and competency is how do you stay on top of all these changes? It's sure. very similar to antivirus software that if you don't have the latest and greatest, right. it's not. So people buy our, uh, buy our support because okay. they, they want to be able to stay up to date and get as most as much evidence as, as possible. And then you guys will be pushing out those updates or those uh, software tweaks, you know, every month or every few weeks or whatever to keep people up to date and on track. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like that you guys need some spies. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Send, send them into uh, <laughs> into the local kick and WhatsApp. Right. And, you know. Right. And and if I'm, if I'm illegal. using your software, and not to I don't give away anything if it's giving something away, but like um, I I boot up your software, and what am I doing? I'm typing in a search term or something, and then and then it's you know searching whatever device I tell it to. So search. I think you're or, looking for. Digital forensic artifacts? Is that yeah. right? Mm. So what the hell are those? Yeah, Steve, yeah. you've done do your I, homework. Yeah, do yeah. I have them? That's and uh, should I be worried about them? <laughs> He's got the link everyone's, down and everything. Everyone's got artifacts. Yeah, I got them, eh? 
Yeah. yeah. So I what, mean, an artifact is, yeah. is basically just a, a, a piece of data. So it could be a chat message, it could be an email, picture. Um, it's just something that's been either stored on a computer or left behind. So the mm. beauty of our software is that, um, and the thing that keeps us on our toes, is that we do all the research to figure out how to get that. So instead of you typing in a search term, yeah. you're saying, hey, I'm really interested in getting some Gmail uh, fragments recovered or, okay. uh, you know, WhatsApp messages or whatever it might be. And we've done the work to figure out, you know, where it's stored, how to get it. If it's deleted, you know, how do we, how do we still, you know, find it and, and recover it? So you're just, you're just saying, this is what I want to search. You're pointing it at a, a drive or a forensic uh, copy of the drive that you've made. Sure. Um, and, uh, and then saying, that's what I'm going to search. Um, and then picking the, the artifacts, the apps, the websites that we support that you want to search for. Right. And just uh, giving it a location to save all the data and, and hitting go. And, and that's... Uh, what, what if I want to find something like photos or video, and I know the content of the photo or video that I want to look for, but, uh, I mean, it, it, do you, can you do, like, image recognition or something? Or is there some way to kind of tell it I need photos containing this person's face or something like that? Like, Yeah, I mean, we have ways of, of looking mm-hmm. at um, taking lists of uh, what's called hash values, so things that okay. like kind of a digital fingerprint of a file. Um, and there's lists out there of known child pornography pictures and things like that that investigators are interested in that they can plug into our tool. And, uh, mm. and then when we find pictures that match up with those fingerprints, we'll, uh, we'll show them that there's a match there. Mm. Um, and then after, after we've recovered data, you can also do keyword searches. So if you're looking for chat messages that, have, that are talking about something specific or mentioning a certain person's name, you can put those keywords in and then you know, filter down what we've recovered for you. But We'll, hmm. we'll get you everything at the beginning and then wow. let you filter that down. Now, be, really cool. before you guys came along, or or maybe even right now too, like what are what are the alternatives to using the software that you guys use? Like, are people would people just do kind of manual, you know, hunting through, uh, scrolling down data on Looking a web page, metadata kind like, of thing? But I guess you wouldn't yeah. even get all the stuff that's been deleted. That's what you guys are able to do: is say, mm. here's the whole history, not just what's left on the phone that you're yeah. able to access. Right. If you get the phone password, like how how did people manage before Magnet Forensics? Mm-hmm. I guess is is not very the well, question. to be no? honest. No. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's been other tools uh, around, and, and kind of the the bigger commercial tools came out in the late '90s. Okay. Um, but they, they've always kind of taken a more general approach. So we'll show you all the files and folders, let you do keyword searches across all the data. Um, but we were kind of the first to really bring in the, the, the more targeted searching where we're doing research across a, you know, a large number of apps and websites mm. and then just building in that, that targeted da- data recovery that's easy to use and, and quick to uh, to set up and, and do the search. So. I guess a lot of that social networking infrastructure didn't exist in the late 90s, right. mm-hmm. or, you know, back when a lot of these other tools were made. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah, everything okay. was kind of in documents and, you know, files on your computer. That, that's kind of where the evidence was. So that's what those tools focused on, which made sense sure. uh, at the time. But, you know, as, as we all know, things have changed enormously with, you know, mobile and social media and the web and, and all that. So hmm. it's fast, fast moving. Uh, field and, and it keeps our engineers on their toes. They get to do a lot of cool stuff, uh, a lot of cutting edge stuff. You know, most sure. of what we do, you can't just go out and, and Google like you know how to recover this you know message. We we have to do that work. Right. Um, so that, you know, people that like a challenge, you know, really enjoy doing that and uh, um, keeps us busy. Wow, yeah. awesome. Now, is it typically like law enforcement organizations that are making use of your software, or do you have other kind of customers in the customer base as well? Yeah, how do I c- prevent Darren from buying this? Can a private citizen just can a private citizen purchase this stuff and start doing their own uh, investigations if they want to do our CSI Darren? We definitely have you on a special list, <laughs> <laughs> the do not sell list. Excellent. Um, <laughs> no, we you know we the majority of our customers are public sector, so. Mm. law enforcement, military, intelligence. Um, But we do have a segment of our customers that uh, what you would consider Fortune 500. So, you know, big banks, pharmaceuticals, manufacturing, because they usually have teams within their organizations that are uh, investigating internal bad behavior. Sure. HR policy violations, people stealing intellectual property, data breaches. that happen. Yeah. 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 Inappropriate SMM. websites yeah. visited, Dan, stuff like right. that. Yes. Right. Um, Thank you for singling me out. Yeah, yeah. They've done their homework too, it seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were looking at your website. Um, 
Uh-huh. Yeah, so we have, you know, we the majority of our customers are public sector, but certainly some commercial uh, enterprises as well. And we and we vet, we vet people that come in, like they have to oh, give okay. us their agency or their company email address, so we won't just sell to anyone. In certain countries, we won't sell to at all and things like that. The old sure. drop and give me twenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we could we use the term corporate espionage? I've always, I think you just did. I've, I've always yeah. wanted to yeah. use that term. I'm just looking for an excuse. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure you use it I think it's a bit of a stretch. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Just internal investigations, maybe. It doesn't sound quite as sexy, but okay, fair enough. Internal yeah. and digital investigations. Yes. Okay, yes. that's a little sexier. Okay, good. <laughs> Cyber investigations. Cyber. Cyber, yes. Perfect. Yeah, like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now we that word around. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, okay, sounds cool. Now, we want to find out a little bit about uh, how you guys got started and uh, where you guys came from. I think before we dive into that, maybe we should just take a few minutes to uh, talk about our sponsor. So, uh, yeah, we do we do have a sponsor for this podcast. Uh, Igloo Software. Igloo Software is, for some reason, they've decided that they want to pay us to make them look good. I mean, <laughs> yeah. talk about their product. <laughs> so well, we, they, yeah. uh, we have a podcast that you actually like, and uh, we're going to do a commercial that you actually like. We hope. For Igloo software, hmm. uh, yeah. which is an internet you'll actually like. Yeah, or so, um, they, so I so went to their say, yeah. I went to their website today just to check them out um, as far as who are they hiring right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and a whole slew of different positions. Cloud developer, customer care specialist, DevOps developer, inside sales executive, search expert, hmm. uh, senior systems administrator, solutions consultant, which I thought was really cool. And I, I took a little deeper uh, peek at. I was going to say, I could offer some solutions. I'm happy to get paid for it. Is there any corporate espionage <laughs> involved general, there? <laughs> general solutions. Yeah, if there's corporate espionage, all the better. They're also yeah. hiring a web developer. Oh, okay. uh, one of the cool things about working at Igloo Software is that they pay bi-weekly. Right. Which means that two times a year, you're going to receive three paychecks in a month. It, that's excellent. <laughs> Isn't don't, that incredible? Don't most, don't most people pay by weekly? Well, month? you know, it's, uh, you get uh, two months, you get extra paycheck. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so just think of it that way. <laughs> All right. I will think of it that way. So the other excellent. thing I wanted to mention real quickly about Igloo is I wanted to talk about their stack. All right. Tell me about the stack. Well, their stack is HTML5 and CSS3, uh-huh. JavaScript. <clears throat> and my favorite, ASP.NET MVC5. Excellent. I'm not sure if they're using the Razor engine or not. But sure. uh, they're a .NET 4.5 shop with SQL Server 2004. Uh, they use Git, Visual Studios 2013, Solar, Redis, and Nerf. Nerf. I don't know if, I think that's Nerf guns. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> I, we did see a lot of Nerf guns in their yeah. office. Right. No question. It's all part of the stack. So yeah. now that you know what Igloo's stack is like and what they're hiring for, what do you think? Uh, I think if there are any kind of uh, tech-oriented people listening who are looking for work, then it would be well worth checking out. Yeah, I'd go to the website, and uh, <laughs> they have a couple ways that you can get uh, noticed or get hired by them. You can actually mm-hmm. just tweet at them, um, oh. or you can uh, find them through LinkedIn or through the website itself, or you could probably just... Show just, up at the door with a Nerf gun and a resume. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Make sure you bring both. One is not enough. That's correct. Especially if you come with just the gun. Excellent. All right. Well, that's good to know. Let's uh, dive back into our conversation here with uh, Jad Saliba and Adam Belcher from Magna Forensics. Um, so, Jad, you were yeah. a police officer but then had to step away from that for a little while. Mm-hmm. And we're sort of a, a computer Mohawk College grad with yeah. a computer science uh, hey, and a nerd background, right? Let's let him right? tell the story, man. So take it from there. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've read the about part on your website. Okay. Is what we're yeah. Saying. Yeah, so yeah. give us some more details than just the, you yeah. know. Okay. Uh, how far back do we want to go? Like so well, toddler age? Like, <laughs> from uh, from being a cop and toy? having to step step away. What <laughs> yeah, perspective yeah. did that? Start us from there. How okay. how long were you a police officer before you uh, got into other things? Well, I was uh, my total time as a police officer was seven years okay. uh, here in Waterloo. Okay, um, cool. A great police service to work for, and uh, yeah, so about I guess about halfway through through that career, uh, I was diagnosed with the uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Hmm. Um, had to step away uh, for about a year with the, the chemo treatments and radiation. Wow, uh, not a fun time. But no. uh, when I came back, they uh, things kind of worked out timing wise they needed some help in the uh what's called the the tech crimes unit uh, where they do all the forensics um mm. you know whatever type type of crime it might be if there's a digital element to it uh they're getting the devices and, and doing the uh the forensic examination on that on that so I had, I had a background in in it uh you know went to mohawk uh, nothing, nothing really special like University well, of Waterloo. Well, but. let me ask then. So you went to Mohawk to do what? Did you do at Mohawk while you were there? 
Uh, it was a computer. What's that? Party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe a Besides little bit. Party, yeah. <laughs> Cyber party. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get yeah. pretty crazy back in Mohawk. Uh, <laughs> computer science students. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So computer um, science you were doing at Mohawk. Yeah. It was kind of a mix of IT and computer science stuff. So kind Did, of that, that practical approach. Are you from Hamilton originally? No. Oh. I, you know, I just, I graduated high school and I was kind of like, I, I just want to work. You know, I, like, I don't want to spend four years in university. I don't like math. Right. Um, um, kind of weird for a computer science guy, you know, but... <laughs> That's all um, good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you, so you did the degree at Mohawk, and then how did you end up getting into policing after doing computer science? Did yeah, I mean, me it, uh, you know, I worked here uh, for a little while. I worked at Open Text for a little while, which is also good. Yeah. And uh, I always, always just kind of had that desire to... Uh, to do something like policing where I could help people and, and do some exciting work. Um, uh, my eyes, my eyesight wasn't good enough for the standard, so I, I had the mm -hmm. LASIK surgery done um, and uh, and applied and, and, and got in. So okay, uh, then, so you know, it was more just an idea, like you wanted a career shift and uh, yeah. moved into that, and now you're kind of combining both. It sounds like yeah. at this point. Um, cool. That was that was the really great thing for me once I did get into the tech crimes unit was. You know, I, I really enjoyed the investigation uh, stuff that I was doing and police work. Uh, and then all of a sudden I was able to, to um, combine that with my IT, you know, development skills um, and, and kind of, you know, put the best of, of both in, into one thing. And so. had you kept up kind of your IT skills while you were, like, when you weren't in that? Do you do, do, you do a little, like, coding on the side at home? Or what like level World of Warcraft or? character do you have? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's asking. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I did. I did to some extent, yeah. But it yeah. was. I mean, it was. It was tough. Um, mm. You know, I, not to the same level that you would if you were if you're working in the industry, obviously. Sure, um, sure. So, but did you have to like ramp up, like get back up to speed once you started doing that kind of work again? Or? Yeah, 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 definitely. And, they, and you know, I did a lot of training and and just kind of that was my world again. So dove sure. back into it. I, I've always been, you know. I always wanted to do more than just my nine to five and, and spending time mm -hmm. uh, outside of business hours, kind of getting myself up to speed on things and learning new things. So sure. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you, so you you got into this this new line of work. You're doing the cyber investigations, so to yeah. speak, yeah. forensics. <laughs> now. What is that, you know, when we compare that to what we kind of see on TV when they're, mm. you know, on these shows kind of digging through the data and saying, you know, pressing the enhance button to make the <laughs> pixely picture look, it's all look true. clear, yeah, right? It's yeah, all like, totally that's right. possible. Like, yeah. what's, what is it actually like when you're doing that kind of work? Like, I'm assuming it's probably a lot more boring. Am, am I right to assume that or... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely compared to what you see in Hollywood, it's it, you know, if you if you're looking at that and then comparing it to real life, it's it's not going to be sure. as, as exciting. And, and so you don't have don't get six monitors at your workstation. Uh, yeah. We had a, we had a few, but not yeah. yeah. We didn't yeah we didn't have the big control screen that's all you know hand right. activated and the clear and glass that. whiteboard. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thing that like, looks like it's at a Tron. Hit yeah, a few okay. buttons and you get everything you want in sure. just a couple seconds. Yeah, sure. But there's there's definitely some cool. Uh, equipment you get to work with and and uh, and software and, and stuff like that and and it's it's just really you know you get to be really creative and figure out you know we've got a case here this is what we need to figure out how do we how do we use technology now to get to get there so mm. and were you writing some of your own programs and stuff as as part of that process or like, yeah I mean I, yeah. there's there's certain things that they needed in the in the unit that um, that I'd you know write a script for or, or whatever just to help us with certain stuff um, mm. just to you know specific to cases and things like that. Sure. So was it from uh, a problem that you saw while you were there and a frustration that you're like, here's a huge opportunity, mm -hmm. I need to get out and do it and yeah. And yeah. Help, how did, help how these did, guys, or how did you get that? How did you go from there to, you know, starting your own company, I guess, yeah. is the real question. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it kind of started with that that, that exact thing. There, the, the tools we had were good, but they weren't really hitting the, uh, you know, the newer technologies and things on the web that, that we were dealing with. And, uh you know, couldn't couldn't recover things that we were being asked to recover. So hmm. uh, one night, I just went home, started doing some research on Facebook chat, and and you know what what gets up behind when you're using Facebook chat, and found out that a lot of stuff did get left on the hard drive in, hmm. in your memory, and there was a there was a way to recover it. So hmm. um, just started spending a lot of time after hours writing writing a tool that would recover Facebook chat and other other things like that. 
Um, mm. And uh, it was kind of just a side project. Called it Jad Software at the beginning. Cool. Really, really terrible name. Like I just, <laughs> I, I went through probably 60, 70 names, and all the dot coms were taken. So, sure. so set, you just use your own name. Settled on Jad yeah. Software. Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> kind of regretted that later on when we'd be at conferences and I'd have a name tag that said Jad, and then the line below it Jad Saliba, and then the line below it Jad Software. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's all about me, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you have we met? I'm Jad. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you know who <laughs> I am. Jad yeah. Yeah. Wow. Got the license plate and everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. So it was just at that point it was like a one man show. You're like yeah. writing the software, using it at work, and yeah. uh, you know I guess that's a good testing ground then, right? If you're writing the software and getting yourself and some of your colleagues, I'm assuming mm-hmm. you'd let your colleagues try it out too. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. And I I put it out on the internet. I gave it away for free because I wanted to help other. Uh, other investigators and police officers that were doing this work to uh, to benefit benefit from it, and sure. people started to blog about it, and uh, the word just got out. So people all around the world started using it because wow. um, there was really nothing else out there that, that could do that at the time. And, and it's so important in the early stages of building something to get you know feedback from as many people as possible, mm-hmm. so you can tweak the product and make it work, right? So exactly. that's like what a great way to do that is uh, getting so, all those. So the snowball's easy. running down yeah. the hill now. Do you have yeah. to lasso it and ski behind it a bit, or? <laughs> Yeah, I Can mean, you check uh, the box, please, Darren? Thank you. Yeah, that's that's Steve has to make one crazy analogy per podcast. <laughs> I thought that was very apropos. Yeah, that's a good one. That's yeah, great. Yeah, Thank like you. That. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably around 2009 was when uh, things were getting, like, I was just spending, uh, getting so much feedback from people on what they wanted to see in the software, getting a lot of great feedback on how it was helping them. Hmm. Um, I was starting to use, you know, vacation time to, to get, you know, new releases out and stuff like that. So um, just got to the point where I was like, you know, one, I, I think, uh, you know, this is really tough to maintain now. And two, if I had, if I could go at this full time and build a team and, and you know bring people in that were smarter than me to, to, to take this to the next level, how much yeah. bigger of an impact could we make? Um, sure. And that's that's kind of when uh, uh, I met Adam. Um, okay. And how did you guys meet? <laughs> it was a dark alley. Right. <laughs> you were investigating night. him. I had a knife. Yeah. He had a gun. <laughs> and, uh, so you're the one who brought the knife to the gun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oops. Yeah, it was obviously my first, first rodeo. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. So uh, how do you uh, how do you wait, get wait, a guy? Uh, we still didn't get an answer. How, how did you yeah. guys? Meet how did you get him? <laughs> we, yeah. yeah, we actually had the same uh, accountant, and um, oh. Cool. He was a really great guy. Um, Mark Young from Mark Young. YNC LLP. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really, really uh, kind of uh, helped me out in the early days and, and really kind of inspired me, uh, you know, in a lot of different ways to, to kind of take this take this plunge. And um, he he had Adam as a client as well and, and said, hey, like, you know, you guys should you guys should talk. Now, um, and let's just right. ask then, Adam. So, what were you doing? You obviously were making use of the services of an accountant for some reason. Yeah. Did you did you have a business that you were running at the time as well? Or what no. Was so I was um, I had started with Rim in '98. I met Jad in 2011. So um, okay, that's a long. Yeah, stretch. I was looking for something to do. Okay. I was something new to do. And uh, what what kind of stuff were you doing at Rim? Oh man, I was. Oh, actually, I'm not sure what I was doing. You've got, oh, the, okay. you've got the best. Uh, you've got the best resume line that I've seen on anybody's about page. You got uh, the Verizon uh, Rim department from 400 million to two billion in a matter of four yeah, years. Yeah, we had a good. We had a good yeah. team. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of cool to put on a resume. right? Yeah, those are good, good numbers. Yeah, <laughs> they're good. Is it like project management type work, or were you like writing the code, or what, what were you doing? Oh God, no. Yeah, I'm not oh. that smart. No. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> I did a bunch of things. I did some business development. Development, did sales most of my career, uh, spent some time in Europe with RIM, and then my last gig was I was the vice president for the Verizon business unit. So basically mm-hmm. running the, the sales and my marketing team for, for the, to support the carrier. Okay, very cool. Yep. And uh, and your accountant was like, you looking for something new? Talk to this guy? Well, I was I was looking for something new. It had been uh, 13 years at that point. I'm like, you know what? I need to change. Like, it's been an awesome run, learned a lot of lessons, but just need to change it up and... You know, I started with a pretty wide net. You know, mm. I was talking to people that had owned restaurants, that had owned car dealerships. And um, mm. so I went, there was a bit of a process, went through, and then um, I talked to our, my accountant and said, hey, like, you know, I'm, I'm looking to buy a business, partner on a business. Do you know anybody? And mm. then uh, he said, hey, there's this, there's this cop, and he's got this software, and... 
everybody around the world is using it, and I think you guys should meet. I said, yeah, that <laughs> sounds real interesting. Uh, so then you met in a dark alley. <laughs> yeah, you met in yeah. Meeting number one. <laughs> yeah. And what, what made you guys decide, like, yes, we absolutely want to work together? Because that's, that's a big decision, right? Was like, it love at first tie, bite? Yeah. Tie yeah. your fates together for the next how many years, right? So, yeah. That's a yeah. good, that's a a good question. question. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, when we, I think when we, well, I felt like when we met, we we hit it off. We, you know, we have a lot of the kind of same values and ethics, and mm. um, I think we just had a lot of same beliefs and and felt that we were complementary to each other. I think that's mm-hmm. the key thing. You know, it's uh, my experience is kind of more on the, the sales and marketing side, and Jad's is more kind of on the technology side. So it was a good. It seemed like a good fit, and I think we just we hit it off, and we built that. I think we built trust pretty quickly sure. um, and we're really open about our kind of our aspirations and where we could go and sure. nothing was standing in the way of the truth then is what you're saying. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Interesting. Boom. We brought the truth to light. <laughs> yeah. So and it, at this point it's just the two of you like nobody else had been hired there wasn't anybody else helping out on the team or anything. And, yeah. and how long Just ago the was that then? <laughs> <laughs> Just the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> at what point did you guys did you guys connect then? Uh, so that was over the summer of 2011, and we kind of okay. just kind of met, um, you know, throughout the summer and, and got to know each other and, you know, got a feel of, like, like you were saying, like, could we work together for a long time and, and uh, would we complement each other's skills? And, uh, cool. yeah, mm-hmm. everything went really well. And in the fall, we, we both uh, left our jobs and went full time. Wow. With, uh, and and what company. was that? What was that transition like? Was it like we better get some offices, or you're working out of somebody's basement, or mm-hmm. how, did how, how, did, how did it look? Funding? Yeah, or did you raise money at that point? Like what? Uh, what was the next step? Yeah, the no. next. Go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> you. <laughs> no, you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, Adam invested some money in the business, and uh, okay. um, you know that that helped kick things off. And then we uh, we thought we were going to make a go of it uh, from our from our homes and just kind of work from home for a bit, and that quickly did you know proved itself to not be the best option. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So we uh, we applied to to be a client at the Accelerator Center. Right. Um, I've seen you guys up on the wall or mm-hmm. as a graduate from the Accelerator Center there. So I was going to ask when that came, came yeah. to play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gonna they say? said they were going to put it so it blinks. Oh, right. flashes the M, yeah. I don't know if they've done that yet. No, I no. haven't okay. seen Andrew Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Andrew Jackson, yeah. We can talk to Sorry. Him. <laughs> cool. So you get into the accelerator center, like just put in an application and they're like, Yeah, sure, come on in. Yeah, they're like, please, like when can you start? <laughs> wow. That's cool. So now you've got some office yeah. space over there at that yeah. point. Are, do you start hiring like right out of the gate or have, what what's the next step after that? Yeah, pretty early on, I guess. Yep. Yeah, we uh, hired the first first couple of people. And, um, and what are they? What were they doing? Development stuff. Sales, actually. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Smart. Well, and it's it's you know I'll give Jad a lot of credit for this. You see a lot of entrepreneurs that have come from a technology or engineering background, mm-hmm. and their their comfort and the comfort zone and their you know, their growth plans usually involve, like, let's just get more developers and throw more, you know, on the product. And we did that in later stages, but Jad understood the importance of sales and marketing as well and, and having having both. And we, as we've evolved as a company, it's been interesting because we've, you know, maybe had over-indexed on developers for a period of time, and then that went down, and then sales and marketing. So it's... Sure. You it's, go through cycles of needs and, and yeah. demand, right? Um, so what, did you start charging at that point then for the product? Like it sounds like you had been giving away for free for a while or had you already started getting started, some money yeah, from people? Started in 2011 yeah. charging. Okay. Um, so, but it was, it was really underpriced. So, uh, Adam's first uh, order of business was to, uh, <laughs> Jack up bring that, price. bring that up to parity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Value-based price. Of course. Yeah. Well, We're you know done testing now. Yeah. 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 Like people, if, if it's a higher price, people will actually think of it as a higher quality right. product, right? Even yeah. if it's not any different than the, the lower. Price. There's true. a huge study in the wine industry about that. Yeah, mm. it's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, you can taste the cheap wine and taste the expensive wine. It's all dependent upon what what people tell you. It's it's worth, yeah. right? Perception yeah. is reality. Yeah, yeah. there it's you true. go. 
interesting. Not with our, not with our software, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's set the record straight here, guys. Yes. <laughs> Even perception cannot stand in the way of the truth. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you might perceive, but oh no. <laughs> cool. Okay, uh, so so you've got some office space. You start charging people for the product. You raise the price to the point where it should be at and mm-hmm. uh, get some salespeople. And then what's the next step? Grow the customer base? The next like, step is get Ameris on board. I want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, we uh, we were at the accelerator, I think, for basically a year, right. and we had grown from you know basically a cubicle with a couple of desks to kind of two of their big rooms, and then we took down wow. walls and all this kind of stuff. Wow! Um, so we accelerated <laughs> fairly quickly. Um, we were happy when we raised the price that we, you know, we continued the customer momentum. So that was good. And then that really, because we've been growing organically, we haven't taken any external funding. So it's, wow. you know, our growth. Even now, you guys haven't taken any no, other funding at all? No. Wow, that's excellent. Yeah. That's so amazing. it's it's been focused on, okay, we got to, and it really forces you to deliver an awesome product support the customer well, give them a great experience, and yep. focus on a lot of the front end of the business, which is make sure that you're getting the sales, make sure you're getting the awareness mm. of the product out there. So it, it, you know, it's a bit of a different route than I think a lot of companies, but it certainly puts a lot of discipline, and, and you really have to make those tough decisions when you don't have tens of millions of dollars in the bank where you can kind of, you know, a VC is actually encouraging you to spend, and maybe you're not spending it as wisely as if, Sure. And we've just spoken to a couple of those companies out of the Communitech Rev uh, Mm. cohort, um, and they're focusing on not funding, but customers, right? Yeah, that's great. Um, So, yeah, Advolve Media was one of those that was just on last week. Mm. So he's trying to get revenue and trying to, you know. smart. And and how do you guys market a product like what you have? You're not... uh, kind of going through typical channels you have a very specific uh, audience I would assume right so is it is it kind of happening with word of mouth with different kind of investigative agencies you know talking to each other or is it uh, you know trade shows mostly or how, how do you get the word out there about what you guys do sales team making 100 yeah. calls yeah it's a lot it's it's all of those things right like I think um, you know one of the things that we do quite a bit of trade shows and conferences. Jad does a lot of speaking at the conferences, which, you know, or our training guide is a lot of labs. So we do a lot of labs and speaking, and then we usually have a trade show booth. So we do all the major conferences. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we do the traditional kind of inbound marketing, I think has been a big driver for us. So right. lots of blog content, lots of other great content that's relative to our customer base. How do, how do you help them do their job better? So we've got a mm-hmm. lot of inbound um uh, marketing leads from from those activities. Mm. We've yeah we have a pretty good sized sales team that are focused on both new customer acquisition as well as um, maintaining the current customers. Uh, sure. So we've got hunting comp- and gathering. Hunting and gathering exactly. <laughs> um, and, and are you guys operating all over the world? Or are you just in North America at the moment? How yeah, we know Jad and I are a bit disappointed in terms of our global expansion. Um, mm. We were targeting last year to hit a hundred countries to okay. have our product in, and we're at ninety-two. Oh man, that's um, I'd be so, yeah. I wouldn't sleep at night. Yeah, so it was a bit of a oh, letdown. Yeah. You're sure. keeping them around, Jad? Sure. Yeah, you're going to keep them around. After yeah, that, yeah. disappointing. We'll uh, try to hit hundred this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we've, you know, wow. we try to set the bar high. Yeah, no, we're, that's you know, awesome. the product, you know, to Jad's credit, developing a product that solves a real pain. And to your point, uh, Steve, the, it really has been a lot of word of mouth early on, because unlike other industries, like you're in the automotive manufacturing, Ford is not going to tell General Motors right. a new process they developed to reduce their you know, cost to build a car or some new manufacturing improvement. Sure. You know, there's crime is cross-border, cross-country. Yeah. You know, if the Secret Service is working on a case, they could be working with Europol or Interpol, et cetera. So there's there's a lot of, in our industry, there's a lot of collaboration. So if you do a good job and you develop a good product, then word travels fast now. You know, the What's the government think of you guys? Yeah. They love us. Do you guys have, uh, (laughs) are you in that sector at all? Absolutely. Do you guys travel on a, like a diplomatic visa or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have the red passport. Yeah. Yeah. We have a we have a diplomatic plane. I mean, I don't know. Ooh. if it's the same, same category. Yeah. 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 It's in Jad's it's office. It sits on top of his desk. Oh, yeah. oh that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's. I was just learning recently, actually, about what you know, kind of the red tape you got to go through to get on that approved vendors list for government organizations, and it's a lot of a lot of hoops to jump through, you mm-hmm. know, and. Uh, that's if you guys have, you know, are doing that not only in Canada but in other places as well. I mean, that's 
that's a real kind of testament to your commitment to uh, what you can do, I think. Mm-hmm. Right? So Yeah, I thought yeah. software was complicated, but that world of 92 <laughs> different countries and the, the crime, yeah. oh my God, that must yeah. be, that must make your head spin sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we, we really have to thank our, our customers for kind of, you know, creating that um, demand from within and, and kind of champ, be, being a champion for us uh, within their organizations to help sure. us through some of those hurdles. Well, it is cool that you're in an industry that is all about collaboration, right? Mm-hmm. Like that, I'm sure that definitely helps in uh, connecting with more, you know, yeah. uh, potential customers that way. Yeah, so definitely. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, do you have like, do you, is it in multiple languages, your your product? Or do you have, I guess you have people on your team who can handle, you know, some dealing with people in a hundred countries. So that's a lot of yeah. countries to be servicing. Yeah. For customer mean, service. We have a few salespeople that speak different languages so that, that can help sometimes. Sure. Uh, <laughs> the software is in English right now. Um, mm-hmm. We're translating the some of the documentation and stuff like that into other languages. But for the yeah. most part, I mean, most countries around the world that if you're doing forensics, you speak English. You can. Right. You're, you're used to software being in English, so it's it hasn't been a big uh, roadblock for us. Um, okay. But it's something we're going to explore probably next year. Um, you know, getting into some of the you know the the bigger uh, uh, other languages out there. Absolutely. Um, so good. let's. I just want to make sure we kind of covered your story. So we've we had you guys in the Accelerator Center. When did you move out of the Accelerator Center and take over this uh, beautiful space you're in now? Well, we've had a couple of steps, Darren. Oh, October okay. 2013, we had our, our graduation, I believe. Then we okay. moved to Uptown, Uptown Waterloo. Oh, yeah, Not yeah. downtown Kitchener, Uptown Waterloo. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, yeah. uh, Is there a difference between those? <laughs> wow, well, one's Uptown, one's Downtown. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I mean, one's up, one's yeah, down. Yeah, Billy Joel certainly <laughs> thinks so. Um, country club. Yeah, cool. man, country club. Uh, so we moved Uptown. Um, to a space right above uh, Peter Braid's office. Oh, yeah. Local uh, MP. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, and then we quickly, like I think just short of two years, mm-hmm. we basically outgrew that place. Um, and we had probably 40, 45, maybe 50 people we were there. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. So we had a, you know, we were halfway in a, halfway through our lease and we're like, hey, we're just, we're busting at the seams here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so then we started looking for space, and then we moved in here in December of last year. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. All right. So it hasn't so been too been, long that you've been here. No. Yeah. And how many employees are you up to now? 60, 64, 65, yeah. yeah. Wow. Still yeah. That's, that's Still that's hiring pretty, and growing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. some crazy growth <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for, for a, uh, something that was only a startup back in, what, 2011, you said? Yeah. Was yeah I mean, really, 2012 is when we really started. Hiring. So, wow. About three years. Mm-hmm. Wow. Been, it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in a good way. Yeah. And how big is the development team now? You're not writing all the code yourself anymore. No, no, they don't like that. <laughs> they don't like me to touch the code too much anymore, actually. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> every, yeah. I, every, you know you've made make, it. When? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you can't touch your own Get code. Get out of the anymore. kitchen. <laughs> yeah. If I ever want to make them nervous, I'm just, I start talking about some code that I've been writing. Or <laughs> <laughs> just to tease them a bit. Like, they oh, want to build geez. a switch that shuts Git, Git off from my office. So. Uh-huh, sure. <laughs> a big <laughs> lever, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, I, I guess we're about half and half, maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Half, half development, half sales and marketing. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Wow. Which seems to be a good mix. Mm-hmm. Well, that's awesome. Uh, is it uh, is it yeah. getting cloudy out there? Yeah, I think it might be time for the lightning round. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. That's Darren's first lightning bolt, everyone. Yeah, I, I got to do the sound effects this time because Stephen is actually covering all of the lightning round questions. He I have a whole bunch of questions for you guys. He's been diligent in putting together some completely fresh and new material. Yes, these are not yeah. old lightning bolts. These are oh, brand wow. new lightning oh, wow. bolts. Excellent. So we're going to throw these at you guys That's and uh, see how you do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Adam's got a call. He's Adam just got a quick call. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll, go, I'll start you guys off with a really easy one. I, I still get the bonus question at the end. Absolutely. Right? Okay, yeah, perfect. If you must. Yeah, perfect. Um, okay, go for it, man. Because of uh, this is uh, themed for Adam and oh, his time in, in the United Kingdom. Um, uh-huh. And each of you guys, please throw an answer at me. Um, oh. So Monty Python or Mr. Bean? <laughs> oh, that's tough. I know. Mr. Bean. Yeah, Mr. Bean. Jad? Uh-huh. Ah man, I'm on the I'm on the fence. Can we throw faulty towers in there? Is a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Option? That would lean it towards Monty Python, though. Yeah, but fair enough. So, yeah, you I'd, got I'd go John Cleese. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Excellent. Awesome. So here's a here's a tougher one. Um, Pirate Bay, Skid Row, Reloaded, Kickass Torrents. Is there a place for these kind of websites in the world? 
<laughs> we ask you as the forensic experts. <laughs> yeah. As long as we can get the data from them. <laughs> get the user data? <laughs> They're being used to uh, to transfer legal content and, and, you know, abiding by all the copyright uh, laws out there, then, then sure. So you think there is a place as long as it's not... Uh, copyrighted yeah. material that yeah. they're passing. Yeah. yeah, don't diss the tool. It's, mm-hmm. it's the content. Right? Yeah, the technology yeah. is great and, and, and it makes sense. It's just, you know, there's a lot of obviously complicated issues around copyright mm-hmm. and, and all that stuff. So that's, mm. you know, that's an issue. Yeah, fair okay. enough. Here's a similar question. Edward Snowden, the uh, 29-year-old NSA whistleblower who's uh-huh. now in Russia, I believe, just for some background if you don't know him. Uh-huh. Hero or villain? Hmm. hmm. I thought these were supposed to be easy questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't say they're easy. Only lightning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know enough about the situation to really comment, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Jad, any Wise. opinions? You can't take that answer now. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> Fair enough. We can move on, guys. So what's the most satisfying case you've ever had, or most scary case, or hard case, or fun case? or Give us something uh, that you guys mm-hmm. have... Really, if, if, if you're, you're able, to yeah, yeah without too much confidentiality. Yeah. We have some really, really cool things that we've been involved in, you know, through our software. But the the problem with them is that we can't talk about them yet. And can, can you it, talk in generalities? Generalities. Like we caught, like a, we caught a picture we caught of a bad guy. Did this or like? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's been cases where, um, so there's a case, uh, child child exploitation related, where um, some of the chat messages we recovered. Um, took a case that was kind of shaky, didn't have a lot of really, really good evidence, and uh, really gave it some strength. Um, they were expecting a kind of a, a fight through the trial, and uh, turned into a guilty plea pretty quickly, and went from 15 years to 50 years in jail because wow. of the gravity of, of the content and what you know what this person had done. Um, and then they just took the took that as a deal. Uh, obviously, this is a U.S. based case because right. of that <laughs> 50 years. Yeah, um, right. Uh, but that w- that's kind of one of many examples. And then if you think about some of the really big shootings and terrorism-related uh, events that have happened in the States, um, you know, we've uh, uh, we've played a part in those as well. That's that must awesome. be so cool when you hear that, like, the thing that you built is helping to make mm-hmm. the world safer, right? Absolutely. Like, that's, that's what drives me. Good. That's what drives everyone at the company. And, you yeah. know, we, we have a lot of cool perks and, and you know, cool technology and, and great people to work with. But really, um, people come here to to, to to be part of that and, and yeah. to, to get to build something that makes a, makes a real difference in the world. That's awesome. And to be able cool. to provide such truth and clarity to the legal system is sort mm-hmm. of unprecedented, right? Exactly. It yeah. really cuts through all of that nonsense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. When, you, when you've got search terms that you can show that the person was searching for, chat yeah, messages, <laughs> you yeah. can show yeah. if, it, if there's any question of you know what the intent was there, yeah. you know, that, that really helps kind of answer the question. <laughs> Perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what is, uh, looking back, uh, do you guys have any do-overs that you'd like to redo? Any tweaks or any mm. pivots that you'd make thinking, you know what, we shouldn't have focused on this market, we should have done this, or give they us... They seem to be doing okay. Yeah, though, I know. That's why I'm, we I'm haven't hunting for something. mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a tough question. Other than this podcast, possibly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is this the live? <laughs> we get to edit this later, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to cut out all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think, uh, and I think Jai would agree, I think our, you know... The one thing that you are challenged with when you have, you know, aggressive roadmap and growth plans is you just you just need help. You want to get people in that can help you grow the company because you're just swamped. And I think we we've got a lot better on being more rigorous in terms of our hiring practices and who we let in the door. So I think we made a few misfires on maybe not a good fit for the people that came here, but not a good fit for Magnet earlier mm-hmm. on, mm-hmm. where our, our track record's a lot a lot better now because we have multiple interviews and it's a lot more, you know, I would say streamlined, but a lot more um, defined in terms of what we look for and things like that. So I think we've, sure. we've matured on that. Yeah, and mm-hmm. maybe you just get better at it from doing it so Yeah, right? exactly. So, yeah. I mean, Jad and I exactly. interview every candidate uh, mm. that comes in the door. Mm-hmm. Um, we spend a lot of time on the people stuff because it's, it's so important. And if you get it wrong, it's just so disruptive, both mm-hmm. to that person, but to the company, the team, the, you know, uh, everyone they kind of interface with. It becomes becomes tough. So we, yeah. uh, we'll spend the time now up front. You know, it's, you know we, need, we need a lot more people, but not... 
to this, not but not sacrificing the quality and, and the people that really fit and believe what we believe. So sure, it's better to take the time to hire the right person than hire yeah. the wrong person and, and have a you know yeah. deal with mess it. things up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. On a day to day basis in your sort of workflow, what's the hardest thing that you guys have to tackle? Do you hate opening your email? Is it returning calls? Is it making the daily stand up meeting with the what's what's the just getting out of yeah. bed? Like I mean, I think that's the top. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you got to get up and eat yeah, that yeah, goat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got a sheep yeah. yeah. to kill and yeah. a goat to feed. Like yeah. the floor. <laughs> um, it's a great. It's a great question. I yeah. get a lot of emails, so that's. I mean, that's a tough thing to keep keep on top of and you know and then you know that's just email so you've got all these other things you're looking looking after or you want to be involved in um but you know I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to how to manage that better uh, you know i think there's a lot of high value things there that that i'm involved in you know when it comes to either replying to customer things or sending stuff out to to you know speak with customers or, or other other involved parties so mm. For me, that's it's a time management thing, you know, just trying to trying to be involved in all the things I want to be involved in, figure out which things I need to step back from and just kind of let let other people totally own it and, mm. uh, you know, and then and be OK with it. Can I that. just ask real quick, Chad, like you went from kind of doing everything like sales, marketing, product development, everything to mm. now you're just focusing on the tech alone. Like, mm-hmm. was that a good transition for you? Like, are you happy to just kind of look after the product? Or yeah, I mean. Yeah? Uh, it, obviously, there was like some struggles of letting things go at the beginning, but I, I think I did a decent job of not holding on too tight. Mm-hmm. And now, like you know, you, you quickly see people way better at sales doing sales, way better at marketing doing marketing, way, way better at development doing development. So sure. it's uh, makes you kicking and screaming a lot less. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. When you're like, <laughs> I love go. I love looking at stuff and, and being like, I I couldn't have done that as well as they did, and then that's a great feeling. And if you can share, you share in that success because you're mm-hmm. the guy that enabled that to happen, right? Mm-hmm. And without yeah. that creativity and that strength to enable them, then yeah. you would have limited yourself. Yeah. So yeah. I'm trying I'm trying now just to kind of enable people to, to you know to be great and and you know reach their their uh potential potential thank you sure. but their aces in their places right <laughs> yeah we're, we're poker players yeah <laughs> TSP, uh, weekly poker tournament coming if up if it rhymes time. Awesome. it must be true so <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah that didn't rhyme i like yeah. that Eight um places, yeah. what are you guys uh what are you most proud of and we're almost there <laughs> <laughs> professionally sure, sure. or sure. personally either <laughs> we don't judge here. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't mean. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, frankly, I'm really professionally, I'm super proud of the work we do, right? Yeah. Like the impact that we can have on people. When you hear these stories, and certainly we're not involved in the investigation, but often we will get an email or meet somebody at a conference that, hey, do you realize because of your software, you saved two kids this week? Wow. They were being abused or being trafficked or things like that. Um, yeah. So I think for me, um, it's really like the impact that we can have. There's a lot of companies out there that say we're making a difference in the world and yep. they're, they're building, you know, a fart app. Yep. Okay. And that's, and, hey, <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever. Like, <laughs> hey, that's great if you can if you can really stretch it and yeah. believe that you're making a difference in the world. But we can truly like we actually have helped save lives. Yeah. We've helped you know victims families we've helped victims through mm. through our software so the work that we do um is really so gratifying it really keeps us all you know passionate about the topic and it fuels our our growth and our passion and really the the people that we try to bring into the company really want them to have that same belief that they sure. actually want to make a difference and we'll do what it takes to, to to make an impact so i think that's i think that's the big one for me. Sure. It must be hard to be paid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. No, no, no. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, this is the last question I have for you guys. Um, invent a new technology in three, two, one. <laughs> go. What do you got? <laughs> Give me something new. Technology. New technology. Jad's got something I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Just, Mike doesn't Adam, want to tell us. So yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sell it. Whatever you come up with, I'll sell it. That's it. That's it. Um, yeah, uh, what do you see out there in technology? Anything new on the on the horizon? Uh, in or something you're kicking around in the back of your mind? Maybe you don't <laughs> want to share. Say this. Yeah, we have the look in that. his face. <laughs> I haven't patented it yet. Or, yeah, or is there another area you'd like to dabble in beyond forensic investigation? Like. 
Well, I, I think, I mean, on a serious note, some, you know, we're, we're definitely looking at, you know, we look at the data at rest right now on a hard drive or on a smartphone, and, and we're looking at, you know, the online world has a lot of information and, you know, answers to questions and, and intelligence that we can that we can benefit from. So we're looking at leveraging that as well as, mm -hmm. as the uh, the offline data that we look at today. So cool. And I would just I would just kind of dovetail what Jad is saying. Like the interesting thing for us and where the and the world is moving is we do smartphones, computers, and tablets today. Mm -hmm. Um, certainly, the Internet of Things and all the co all the connected devices um, mm -hmm. is real interesting because there's data left behind on your Nest thermostat, yeah. on your Fitbit. Great! Now my toaster's going to tell on me. <laughs> your toaster, <laughs> great. Steve, your fridge. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Every literally everything you do. Get rid of those human heads in the fridge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking yeah. about that strawberry. Put them in the freezer. Beer. The freezer. Yeah, use old, so <laughs> freezer. Um, yeah. Like we live in this super connected world. And we're living. We're leaving these digital breadcrumbs. Everything we do, we get in our car. You sync your phone to your car. It's syncing all your contacts yeah. and app data, potentially depending on the car. You know, your in the Nest thermostat. You know, it knows when somebody's been in the house last. When you open your fridge, you know, there's a lot of the new fridges have timestamps. So they know when somebody opened the fridge. Yeah. You know, there's 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 so many interesting things as this whole sensors, connected devices, drones, all this stuff has information, which can be really uh, important in terms of an investigation. So mm. there's, looking to the future, there's some real interesting things beyond what we do today mm. um, in terms of the kind of internet connected devices. Sure. And, uh, what kind of data can you get? That's from really that? neat. My wife's going to be upset that we're throwing the toaster out, but that's really, <laughs> that's really cool. That's you didn't awesome. know one anyway. Yeah. Well, Darren, you're at the yeah. end of your um, yeah, uh, I, push broom porter. Oh, we got to go. Sorry. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. It's for my research. So, yeah. uh, if my, you're going, my bonus question is toilet paper fold or scrunch? Definitely fold. Fold. We got a fold from Mr. Jad. I think it depends. If it's the real, real thin stuff, it yes. doesn't fold well. Right. So you got to scrunch. But if you get like the Cottonelle triple, yeah. quadruple ply, then it's definitely fold. Spoken okay. like a true you marketer. Fold that shit if you fold it enough times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think careful. The, the cheap stuff is usually the stuff that if you scrunch it the wrong way, it's going to like gouge out, you know, parts of you. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. just got to be careful, yeah. you know. But that's just yeah, me. Safety maybe. first. <laughs> maybe it's safety all about first. technique. <laughs> yes, exactly. Your toilet cool. paper roll is going to be telling these guys a lot of data. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My connected toilet paper yeah. roll. That's right. Um, crazy. Well, listen, guys, um, before we wrap up, uh, if we want to kind of track with your story and find out where Magnet Forensics is uh, heading in the future, well, first of all, do, we, do you have any kind of things you can tell us about where you guys are heading, new developments or uh, growth that's on the horizon or... Maybe it's all confidential. I don't know. I don't know if, can we tell these guys? Yeah, so, well, I mean, we covered a few things that were. we're yeah, you just at rolled out the new magnet acquire, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're definitely, you know, we're going to be going deeper on the mobile side of things. We're going to be, you know, looking at, at you know online sources of data and um, and just really just helping build more tools to, to get to the answer. So we're 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 recovering more and more data. Yeah. And now we need to give you know people tools to filter that down to the really relevant relevant things. So okay. That's, you know. Got, awesome. We've got a pretty big roadmap, a lot of exciting stuff that we're working on. Perfect. Sounds great. And if we wanted to follow your story, like where can we do that? You have your website, magnetforensics.com. Yeah, dot yeah, com. Com. yeah. yeah. all right. Uh, Twitter, it's just at Magnet Forensics. Yeah. LinkedIn. Um, yeah. LinkedIn. Awesome. Facebook? Uh, Are you guys Google on Plus? Facebook? No, we're not going to do the Facebook thing. No, no. no? all right. Yeah. Google Plus? You, yeah, the only yeah, guys Google I've heard Plus, have done yeah. Google Plus over Facebook, but sure. Yep. Yeah. All right. yeah. <laughs> and thanks to you guys for hosting the last Hacker Nest event here. Oh, that was really oh, cool. Yeah, that's yeah, it. I enjoyed, uh, yeah. enjoyed that. So thank you for that. We should mention we're, we're actually interviewing the, uh, is it next week? Yes, we have a Marathon yeah. next week oh, to wow. talk about Hacker Nest. Oh, right. great. Awesome. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll and be back here at your offices again. Well, next I know, week, before so. we wrap up, we you should. You guys bring the beer this time. That's right. Absolutely. We should mention before we wrap up that we're pretty much on our exact, like, 
one year anniversary with episode 50. This is episode 50 of the podcast. Oh, wow. And, so uh, honored. It That's was awesome. end of May <laughs> that Stephen and I sat down in the conference room, not unlike this one, but over at Conestoga College, and did our first kind of test episode to see what would happen. And um, so this is, we've come wow. full circle. We took a few weeks off at Christmas, but uh, we've been doing it every week since, which yep. is crazy. And great. Uh, yeah, and, and one of our very early guests was the representative at that time of Hacker's Nest. I think hmm. it was our, our first guest we ever had was uh, right. Sammy Waffa. Yep. And, uh, and hmm. now here we are <laughs> exactly a year later. Uh, um, talking to Hacker's Nest again. Yeah, talking to Hacker's Nest yeah. again. So the cycle continues. Hopefully we'll have another year of great uh, content coming up for you guys. We have to and have a better uh, meeting story. We, our first podcast was in an alley or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brad, we got to work on that. You brought a knife? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> something. <laughs> I brought an right iPhone there. and you brought an Android. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but that it was, is a fight. You know, excellent. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, what what better guest to have on our uh, kind of one year awesome. you know, awesome. wrap Did you guys plan it this guys. way? Like, like just yeah, one year ago, we said, you know what? We want Matt. Magnet, we, this now. is our goal to have magnet on <laughs> yeah. by next year, and uh, here we are. It's perfect, um, awesome. Well, let's right. let's do some thank yous and wrap things up here. Um, special thanks, uh, first of all, to uh, Mr. Jad Saliba and uh, Adam Belcher from Magna Forensic for having us on. Uh, or, for, for having us in your offices and uh, you. letting us record with you guys. Thank that you. was Thanks great. For coming here. And uh, we want to thank uh, you, our listener, for joining us on another episode of TSP Weekly. Um, please feel free to send us your comments, your questions, your criticism, your feedback. Our email address is feedback at tspweekly.com, or you can just drop us a message on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at TSP Weekly. So, for myself, Darren Conley, my co host, Stephen Campbell, and our guests, Jad Saliba and Adam Belcher from Magnet Forensics. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode, and we'll see you all next week.